so today I basically am going to show you what supplies I keep for cross stitching, how I store them, and a few kind of fun extras that I sort of have. The first thing I'm going to show you is my whip tote, and I will insert a front view of this. It's just this little canvas tote that I got at Hobby Lobby, and I love it. It fits perfectly um, with these little project bags that I use, and I pretty much keep things in here that I'm currently working on. So let me give you a little look. On the corner, hanging on the tote, I do carry a, uh, I do keep a pair of magnifying glasses. I use pretty much 100% of the time 16 count Ada. It's what I like to use, it's easy for me. Uh, I want my cross stitching to be fun, so I don't wanna have to struggle or work too hard at it, so that's my preferred fabric. And these glasses just help me kind of see a little better. And I just put this binder clip here and it's just perfect little place to sort of hang my glasses. So they're always handy when I'm ready to work. Now inside my bag, right up front, the first thing I keep is this little canvas, like little zip up pouch here. And it's not really big, but in here are all my supplies and they're pretty handy. So I have in here this little ot light. It's a clip on ot light and I love it. It only cost about like 20 bucks, I think. And it's really bright and it can kind of clip right to where, wherever I'm working. And I do use a cross stitch frame, which I'll show later, and it clips right to it. So it illuminates my work and it makes it so easy to see. And then the other things I keep in here, I haven't used this yet, but I do have this conditioner thread or thread conditioner, excuse me, that I did get in one of my um, stitch quarterlies from the Fat Quarter Shop. So I'm excited to kind of give that a try. I have some little random things in here, which pretty much shouldn't be in here. But this is my little box O stuff. So this is what I have with me every time I'm cross stitching. And inside are my So Sweet scissors. I love these. They're super sharp. They come with a little um, cover for the um, blades and they're just the really, really nice scissors. And I got these at the Fat Quarter Shop as well. They fit in here. I do have a seam ripper in case I need to frog something, which does occasionally happen. I have in this little section over here a needle threader because my eyes are getting to where I can't see the eye of the needle so well anymore. And then I need this little needle book. It's just a few pieces of felt and I just keep my needles in there and I just have it with a little wonder clip. And it's a great little handy trick I kind of came up with to just keep my needles and it just fits all inside this little box. Just like that. So I can take it wherever I need to go. It sits beside me, doesn't take up much room. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I live in a very small space. So anything saves space is a bonus for me. So this just all fits in here. Easy to grab and just stores right in the front of my whip tote. Next thing I have in here are my whips, of course. These are all the things that I'm currently working on in their project bags. I have my floss in here, I have my pattern in here, and it's in my bag and I can throw it right in there. And I sort of just go through it like a file system. I can just say, oh, what do I wanna work on today? You know, it's all kind of ready to go. So that's really, really, um, handy and I usually have this set up by season because that's how I like to stitch. I kind of do the whole quarterly thing so I have and I'm usually a, I'm usually a season behind so for instance right now it's summer and I'm working on my fall cross stitches. In the fall I will be working on winter cross stitches and so on and so forth. So if I finish them then I finish them and if I don't finish them by the end of the season they go back in my storage tote and I'll change this out for the new season and I'll just work on it next year. Uh, I'm not one of those people that really has to finish everything right in that season, especially because I do multiple things at a time. It keeps my interest level high and I, I enjoy that. So it's not a big deal. It'll eventually get finished and I just enjoy the process. So that is basically my whip tote. Uh, so when I take them out to trade them out, I usually put my finished or my non-finished um, fabric into these gallon size zipper bags. I have just a little piece of paper here, which lets me know what the project is. I do not keep the floss in here. I used to, but that's not a good idea for me because I ended up with so many doubles and triples. I didn't like that at all. So as I work, this was from last year. 
or the last, uh, actually, I think this came out at the beginning of the summer. I'm not sure. Anyway, so here's an example of something that I've started. It is the hands-on design Let's Talk chalk series, and I love that series. I'll be doing the whole series. And when I finish working on it and I'm ready to start the next season of things or my next quarter of things, I just put it right in the bag. And then all the floss goes back into my floss boxes to be worked on for another project. When I'm ready to pull this out again, I'll just re-pull the flosses. Now, you think that might be a pain in the butt? It's really not. Let me show you why. Because I have the cross stitch journal. I absolutely love this journal. It's one of my favorite cross stitch tools. I did get it from Big Surprise, the Fat Quarter Shop. It's made out, uh, made by It's So Emma, which is a Fat Quarter Shop company. Now, how this works is in the front, you have your stitchy list. Now, what this is, is where you can put all your projects in a numbered order. And the great thing about that is it's by project. So project one, project two, project three, and so on and so forth. Now, say I'm gonna do the farmhouse Christmas set, project number seven. So I will look up project, whoops, number, uh, come on. Project number seven. And here you see on project number seven, farmhouse Christmas, this is a, a pattern designer. I don't use the start date and end date, but you could so you know how long it took you to actually do that project. That isn't really a big deal to me. It was, uh, was stitched on 16 count Ada Wichelt in, um, this is gonna be beautiful beige. I put the stitch count on, and this is actually a project where you can do it as one large project or in nine individual singles. So I have it separated in case I wanna do it one way or the other. Um, the stitch size, finish size, and then I also underneath in parentheses keep which size fabric I need to buy or to use for that particular project. And then um, this pretty much isn't a good example because I haven't finished that. So let me go to the next, whoops, sorry, the next one and show you. Um, I can keep the DMC, which is a called for DMC. I always try to put the called for colors on one row and you organize this how you want. This is under the floss box. I actually converted for, this was actually the Main Street one. I converted all my DMC to Cosmo. I love Cosmo. So these are all the Cosmo conversions. And then there's a time tracker box. I don't use a time tracker. I don't really care about that either. So this actually ran into that box, but you can use this box for anything you want. And then your notes. So this particular pattern, the Main Street pattern by Country Cottage Needleworks has 10 singles. You can also stitch it all in one. And I used Cosmo. And then the DMC colors I used that were not Cosmo, I used one, two, three, four, five, because I did not feel Cosmo had the colors that matched these five DMCs accordingly. And you can see I left the lines there and I put in the notes which ones I was using um, for DMC instead. So I love this project book and it keeps me um, organized. Some of it doesn't have quite as many notes because it was a more simpler project. And that way, if I put the thread away when I'm done with the project, next year when I pull it out and wanna do that project, I can open it up, I can see very easily what I need to pull, pull it out of my floss box, and I'm ready to go. So this is a very, very, very favorite tool of mine. I love the Cross Stitch Journal. So, whoops, got my cord in the way, I apologize. Speaking of floss, I did go over my floss boxes in a prior video. However, I have now finished them. This is an example of one of my floss boxes. This is the DMC. I did not have it finished before, but I do now. And these kind of all clip together. Now this is just the DMC. I do have one for Cosmo. I do have one for um, Weeks Dye Works and they can all snap together in one large tower that I can just move easily or I can keep them singly um, this way and just stack them without attaching each individual brand together. So just a really quick peek inside now that I've kind of messed it up. This is my DMC one. Like I said, it was finally finished. I did make a few changes since the last video that I showed. One of those being that on the bottom, you'll see I have this shelf liner, this rubbery shelf liner that I've cut to fit the size of my box. And it just keeps the floss bags from um, moving all over when I'm trying to look. It kind of just sort of holds them in place. I do have these organized by number. 
and I can just so easily just flip through what I need and you see how they don't slip because of the shelf liner down there. I can just flip through like a filing system and they don't really move around. They were kind of slipping and sliding before. So that is a really awesome um, thing there. This actually is a Sterilite tote called the Stack and Carry and it's the small version. Um, so it's awesome and you just get however many you need and just keep stacking them on top of each other. And the nice thing is that these bags, these are um, like Flossway bags. These bags I actually got at a Hobby Lobby but they're the same size. It leaves this side open and that's where I put extras. I don't think I have any in my DMC at the moment, but I can show you from my Cosmo. You can just make sure they're all clipped together. And then if I wanna see from the side, I can just tilt and tap. It keeps them all onto one side generally if I like, I did, like I kinda messed it up. When I do that, they're all organized again. They're all on the side. I can see what I have. So for those of you that use bobbins because you like to see, you can see what you have in these boxes. The best example is really my Cosmo box. I am a huge Cosmo thread fan. So here's my Cosmo box. I actually have one, two, three, four, five of these um, together, whereas a DMC I had four. And here's an example. You can see I've got all my extras on one side and all of my floss is easily visible on the other so like I said for you um, folks that like the bobbins because you can see what you have this is a great system to be able to use floss bags and see exactly what you have now originally I had these by color it didn't work every time I was looking for Cosmo thread I couldn't find the number because you look it up by number and I, it was just such a struggle. I have now changed it and this is all by number, just like my DMC. And I'll give you a peek in one of these boxes as well. So here you go. Here you can see I have all my floss bags and again, very easy to flip through and find the number. And as I said, here's where you can actually see, I keep all my extras in these snack bags. I'm ashamed at how many extras I had, but that's what ha was happening when I was not very organized with my thread. They fit right on the other side. They keep these from moving around. They're all together, so I don't have to store my extras somewhere else. So if I'm looking and I'm like, oh, that bag's empty, here I have it. Um, the other thing I do in my bag, which I, uh, boxes, which I hadn't mentioned maybe in the other video, is I keep them prepared and ready to go. So I don't have to waste time when I want to do a project by cutting my thread and getting it. I can pull it out and everything in here is already cut to length for me. It's already labeled. I'll give you an example here. They're on these floss drops, which I absolutely love. I found these on Etsy. They're just an acrylic floss, um, floss drop. I have them labeled by what it is. And I've got my whole length here already cut and on here and ready to go. And if you've seen my preparing floss for project videos, I don't even take them off the floss drops. I pull them out directly from here. So you can go check out that video and see how I do that. It's so fast and so easy, but every floss in these boxes are all on floss drops ready to go. It saves me time when I'm ready to stitch. I don't have to prepare my floss beforehand. So that took a little time. Um, I was questioning whether I wanted to take the time to do all that. Took me about a week and a half. I am so glad I cut them all and have them all ready to go. I, I have no regrets now. It was worth taking the time to do that. So there's a perfect example of a completely prepared project box. And you can see on the bottom, there is the shelf liner. So finally found the system that works really well for me and it's so portable so lightweight I'm trying to get the other side clipped and it's streamlined this is only how wide it is so I'll have to take these off they no longer apply but on the other side you can see they're all labeled with what the brand is all right next up let's talk about fabric I have this fabric box that I got from Hobby Lobby. It is made by Options. And um, this is about how wide it is. It has these clips. It is labeled, everything is labeled. I have a spot in my closet on the upper shelf where I can put this. And pretty much what I have to work with in my small space is whatever fits on that shelf to the ceiling, 
I can have. Anything that doesn't fit in that spot to the ceiling, I can't have. So that's pretty much um, how I keep myself in check so I don't have stuff everywhere. Um, I keep it all together and I keep it in a very small space. So if it doesn't fit in this box for fabric, I don't get to keep it. It keeps me from overbuying as well. I uh, keep my fabric is separated by bags. So these are my Wichelt Naturals. Wichelt is currently one of my favorites. Um, it's very easy for me to get. It's uh, cost effective. I like the, um, the feel of it. It's pretty uh, stiff if you like uh, stiff. And I keep them uh, by colors. So these pretty much are my, my naturals. These are my different grays and they're all labeled. So when I open it up, I can see, you know, what the color is. Um, I, I'm all out of chalkboard black. I have some on order. I'll be getting some black. And then I have just some random ones. These here are Zweigarts that I got from Hobby Lobby. This is a 14 count Ada. I don't usually use 14 count Ada, but I did get this in a stitch quarterly. And this is by Color and Cotton. And if you like a softer um, fabric, I find, I don't care if it's soft or crunchy. I like it all. So I haven't really had an issue with that, but this is beautiful fabric. It is so soft and so nice. It's just, um, I haven't found a, um, I haven't used it yet. I have to find something that I wanna use for 14. This is another favorite of mine. This is Cosmo fabric. It is probably the most luxurious feeling using fabric I have used to date. I really, really like this. One of the things I like about it is not just the feel, I mean, it feels fantastic, but when I have it on my Q-snap, um, I don't know how they do the weave in here, but the holes are so easy to see. They, uh, they, it glides, everything glides like butter through this. This is just amazing. Unfortunately, they only have about six colors. Um, and it only comes right now, I've only been able to find it in this 13.8 by 16.9 inch size. So if you're doing a large project, it's not really gonna work. But for me, I tend to do smaller projects. So this is working. And I do find the colors a little, um, a little off, like they're count calling this a, uh, a gray and it may come off gray in the video, I'm not really sure, but it's really sort of a brownish gray. So it wasn't really true to color. They also have one called a frozen blue, which is sort of like a grayish blue. So it wasn't really true to its name. However, the natural and the ivory are creamy. They're beautiful, absolutely adore it. And the black, if you like a straight black, the black is also amazing. Love, love, love this Cosmo fabric. So this is pretty much how I keep my fabric. As you can see, I don't have tons. I try to buy fabric for my projects. So when I buy a new project, I try to buy the fabric and have it ready for when I want to do that project. I try because if I'm in such a small space, not have a lot of extras. Do end up with a few, but yeah. So that's my um, cross stitch fabric. And last but not least, we're going to talk about a really fun notion, not something you have to have. You can keep your stuff in Ziploc bags or uh, little bags you might have around the house. Maybe you have extra grocery bags, those cloth grocery bags you want to use. You don't have to be fancy in how you store your whips. I personally like to use these project bags. I think they're really fun, but not a necessity. So I'm gonna show you the different types of project bags that you can kind of go with. The first is probably the most economical. This is just a um, mesh sort of uh, plasticky fabric bag you can get off of Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive and they're pretty durable as well. So you just put your project in here and you can see what your project is. I think I got Oh goodness, about maybe 20, I think of them for like 10 or 12 bucks. So it's really, really, really super economical. So these are a wonderful choice to store your cross stitch uh, projects in. You can also go with a canvas bag. Canvas bags are gonna last a long time. They're good weight. Um, they hold things really well. They're not gonna have a problem if you kind of stretch them out a bit because it is a, a fabric. You can get them with lots of fun designs. They zip closed. So here's another option. And they could do come in different sizes. This is sort of a larger type of one. You can get them smaller as well. 
this is a true sort of mesh. So this is, um, these are all little holes. You can actually cross stitch right on this if you want to get a bag like this and then cross stitch your initials or maybe happy birthday to somebody if you're giving them as a gift or whatever. But these are also really nice. Now these often come with a um, bottom that can extend open and expand. So they're really good for uh, put all your threads maybe you even want to put your hoop or your q snap or whatever if you can fit in the size these come in lots of different sizes they come in larger sizes where it's all like really big i've also used some of these for my quilting so this is a nice option on these project bags and because it has that expandable bottom these will also sit up when you have that bottom open so this is another sort of option that you can get Next are these type of project bags. Now these are really popular and these are just sort of like, um, I don't know if you'd really call them quilted. They do often have a stabilizer or a batting in the back, but it's a nice way to have some fun fabric. And it does have a vinyl front so that you can see what's in your project, but also be able to see oftentimes what's behind the project. And you can do this in um, seasonally, like this one is pretty much like a winter time one. It's really fun and um, they're, they're awesome. The one I have here for this project I've been working on is an example of how you can use perhaps, let me take this out, an orphan block to make a project bag. Now I did not make this, I bought this, but here's just a block, a quilt block. So you can use an orphan block and just flesh it out and use it to make a project bag. Or if you like a particular box, block, make that block specific to make a project bag out of. I just wanted to point out that that's a fun option. And again, I bought this, so I did not, um, to not make that. If you want to buy some of these fun type of project bags, you can just go to Etsy and type in project bag in the search bar and it will come up with all kinds of project bags from all different kinds of designers, lots of different sizes. I try to stick with something around a 10 by 12 to an 11 by 13 size project bag. 11 by 13 is my favorite in this sort of size, but you get what works for you. Let's put that one back in there. The next type of project bag is a type like this. Now this is not um, going to be see-through. It does not have a vinyl front. This is, I believe, the 10 by 12. So this one is a little bit smaller, but these are kind of fun because you can also get them to go seasonally or just to trade out. I just kind of wanted to show you some different options. This does have a zipper and it is um, nice and thick because it has a liner, then it has a batting, and then it has the fabric on front. So you're gonna have a nice protected sort of bag here. It's a lot of fun. And then this is my largest type of project bag. This is the one that also you can't see through, but this one is patchwork. So it's another sort of different option for you. Now the patchwork is fun because you can kind of um, use a whole collection if you like a collection. I believe this is, um, it might be flower garden um, or the next, the next fabric collection after the flower garden. I can't remember the name of it, but um, so these are all just mini charm packs. I did not make this one as well. I got this one off of Etsy, but you can, um, this is all made by mini charm packs, just all sewn together so that the entire collection was able to be featured in the front if you like a fabric collection. And then it has a solid back. Again, it has the liner, the batting, and then the patchwork front. So it's nice and cushy. Now this one is a nice size because this one will fit my 11 by 11 Q snaps already in them. And I have a sample here in my project bag. So here is one with the 11 by 11 Q snap. So if I had this loaded up with something, I could put the entire project right in this bag. So that works out really well. And I believe this one is 13 by 14 or 13 by 15, something like that. So there's lots of different options for using project bags. And I wanted to be able to show you all the different choices that are out there. The very last cross stitch tool or cross stitch thing, it's not really organization, is going to be, let me see if I can adjust this for you a little bit better my table or my lap stand. I actually have one of those project bags covering this Q-snap, which is really kind of handy. But here is a current whip that I have been working on um, 
recently. This one has that amazing Cosmo fabric, but um, a lap stand or a table stand is a great option if you don't want to hold your work in your hand. I can actually use two hands if I want to stitch two handed in here. Um, I put it on my lap. I find it really comfortable. I love it. So it's great for me. And um, yeah, I have a video on this so you can just look it up. It's the K's Creations uh, Z frame. And if you want a full like look at it, like I said, I do have a video on my channel kind of going over this whole thing. So that basically is my cross stitch stuff and how I keep it and organize it. And um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I need to say. I think we're good to go. So if you have any questions or comments or you have some ideas that might work with what I'm already using or something I could be doing better, let them know in the comp let me know in the comment section because I'm always looking for that. I think storage is uh, something we all love and we're all looking to improve. And happy cross stitching.